you can draw this and procreate. During this procreate tutorial, I will guide you through all the steps to create this stylized landscape. After last week's challenging lo-fi room drawing tutorial, I thought it was time for something a little bit easier. For this stylized procreate drawing tutorial, we will start with some simple shapes for our mountains. We'll add some grass and trees, add textures and a lovely sky, all by using very simple techniques. And once you have reached the end of this tutorial, you will end up with a lovely colorful stylized illustration and i'm sure you'll want to share it if you're sharing it on instagram then do be sure to tag me in the image not just in the description so i will be able to find your work and maybe we will see it in the next video just like these amazing results from my friends at patreon patreon is the place you can go if you want to watch even more procreate tutorials i have more than a hundred over there and they range from beginner levels to more advanced levels but now let's get started with this procreate tutorial we will work on a canvas that is 2000 300 pixels by 3000 pixels. The color profile is set to sRGB and we will be using the colors which I have linked in the description and they are totally free of course. The brushes we will be using are already in Procreate but if you want more brushes if you like free brushes then do be sure to go to freefromflow.com because there you can find more than 70 free brushes and my ebook about color theory and yes it's totally free. Now to get started first let's grab our pen or your finger or whatever you'll be using for drawing and let's go and grab a brush. We'll be using the script brush, which you can find under calligraphy. So the script brush and the first color we'll be using is the first color in the color palette. And the brush is set to 100% opacity and I have the size set to 10%. Then let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the sides of our canvas because we are going to make a line and it needs to touch the sides of the canvas. Otherwise, when we drop in our color, it'll spill out all over the canvas. I'll start about here and then we'll make a wobbly line up a little bit downward, wiggly like this, then all the way to the right. And then we'll drag in the color underneath here. Then we'll go to the layer menu, the two little squares, and we'll tap the plus. And then we'll move on to the next color, the second color in the first row. And I will make another wiggly wobbly line. We'll start here. Wavy line to the right. We'll go a little bit higher, make a pointy shape and go to the right like this. Then we'll go and drag in our color. Now, in case you get a little white edge when you fill your shape, you need to drag in a color and then slide your pen to the right to increase the color drop threshold. until you don't see any line there. Then we'll move on, we'll go back to the layer menu, we'll tap the plus, and we'll move on to the next color, the third color in the first row. And we'll start about here, we'll make another wavy line, go downward here, then back up, back down, make a nice hilly shape like this, all the way to the right, and then drag in the color. Then we'll move on and we'll make a new layer. So tap the plus, then go to the color menu and grab the fourth color in the first row. So we'll start here, make a line like this and then go down. And then all the way to the right and then drag in the color. Then back to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer. And then for the color, you can guess it, we'll go for the fifth color in the first row. And I will make a pretty flat hill shape. We'll go like this in front of this one to the right side and then drag in the color. Then let's move on. Let's go and make a new layer again. Tap the plus. Then we'll go to the next color, which is the sixth color in the first row. And then first we'll make a hill that'll start here. Then we'll go down. We'll go to the right and then we'll go back up here all the way to this area until we reach the right side and then we can drag in the color. Then back to the layer menu. Let's tap the plus, move on to the next color, which is the seventh color in the first row. And then we'll start here, make a little hill like this, go back to the right and then drag in the color. 
Then move on, go to the layer menu, tap the plus, and then move to the next color, which is the eighth color in the first row. We'll start here, make a line like this, move up and downward a little bit, and then drag in the color. Back to the layer menu, tap the plus, then go for the color, check the next one, ninth color in the first row. And then start here, move downward, all the way to the right, and drag in the color. For this tutorial, we are using quite a lot of layers. If you are getting in trouble with your layers, then I would suggest making your canvas a little bit smaller. You can do that by going to the wrench, then to canvas, then to crop and resize, then go to settings, turn on resample canvas, and then over here you can make your canvas smaller. For instance, you could go for 1,200. And then over there, it's gone right now, but then you'll see how many layers you can create. And this depends on the type of iPad you're using. I'm going to stick with the size we already have, so I'll tap Cancel. And let's continue creating our hills. So let's go to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer. And then for the color, let's grab the sixth color again. Sixth color in the first row. And we'll make a hill that starts here and goes a bit like this. Then we'll drag in the color and we'll go to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer, and then we'll go to the color menu and we'll grab this color over here, the first color in the second row. Then we'll start about here, make a hilly shape, go downward, and then back up like this to the right side. Drag in the color, go to the layer menu, tap the plus, and move on to the next color, which is the second color in the second row. Then we'll start here, go like this. I hope you can see it. Then we'll drag in the color. Then we'll go back to the layer menu, tap the plus, and then we'll go back to that pink color, which is this one, sixth color in the first row. And then let's start here, make a hilly shape like this, drag in the color, and then go to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer, and then for the color, let's grab this one over here, the eighth color in the first row. We'll start about here, make a shape like this, and drag in the color. For some hills, I want to add the effect of grass. So let's go to the brushes and then to, where is it? Organic, and use the sword grass brush. For the color, we need this pink color, and we also need to go to that layer, which is this one, I believe. Let's turn it off, yeah. That's the layer we need. And for the color, we need the sixth color in the first row. And the brush is set to 100% opacity. And the size, let's set that to 5%. And now let's go along this edge, creating the effect of grass. What I don't like though, is that effect of multiple colors here. Now to fix that, we'll go to the layer, we'll tap it. Then we'll turn on alpha lock and then we'll tap it again and use fill layer. Now it's completely pink, just like we want it to be. Next, we'll do the same thing for this hill. So we'll go to this layer, layer 13. And again, let's add some grass. I'm pushing a little bit harder to create taller grass, just like this. And now we we'll use that same trick. So we'll tap the layer, tap alpha lock, tap the layer again and use fill layer. I also want a grass effect on this layer, but I want to draw it by hand. So let's go back to the script brush. Let's go to the calligraphy brushes, use the script brush and grab this color, the eight color in the first row. And then over here, let's just make some, some grass, some shapes like this. And it's a stylized drawing, so don't give it too much thought. 
doesn't have to be perfect grass. So just some of these grassy leaves. And then you'll want to fill all these shapes. We can zoom in a little bit, then drag in the color. You might need to adjust the color drop threshold. And then use continue filling here at the top and tap all these areas to fill each of these grassy leaves. Now, sometimes you might see some areas that aren't properly filled. You can just go back to the brush and then fix that. You can also add some thinner grass. Just a few. And I also want to add some sort of plants or flowers. Let's make a line like this. And then I want to add some shapes like this, some triangular shapes. A little bit angled. Another one. And maybe one over here. Triangle here and there on each side. And then again, you can use the color drop. Use continue filling and then tap in all these areas to fill them. Now let's zoom out. I think this is looking nice. I want to add a bit of layers to this, to this plane with the grass. So let's duplicate this layer. So we'll go to the layer menu, slide to the left on this layer, then use duplicate. Now let's change the color for this one. Let's grab that pink. That sixth color in the first row, let's drag it on there. So now it's pink. Then we'll go to the move and transform tool. That's the little arrow up here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's move this downward, move it around. We can also use the stored here at the bottom to play with these handles and to change the look of it. And something like this. Now let's go to the layer menu and then let's lower the opacity a little bit. We'll tap the N, scroll to the left. Let's set it to 60%. Then let's duplicate this again. Let's slide to the left, tap duplicate, and then let's change the color for this one as well. Let's go to the color menu and grab this color, fourth color in the first row. Let's drag it on there then go to the move and transform tool and place it all about here and tap the arrow again to get out of there. And it's okay that we have this awkward little edge here because we are going to place something else on top. So we won't be seeing that. Now I can just merge these three layers by pinching them together. And now let's go ahead and create a new layer on top. Let's tap the plus and then for the color, we will use this fourth color in the second row. Let's check our brush. We still have the script brush. That's the one we need. And now let's create some, some leafy shapes here. Maybe a little bit rounded, pointy, just a variety of these shapes. And maybe something like this. Well, let's undo this a little bit shorter with some rounded leaves. Now let's drag in the color for this area. Let's use continue filling, tap all these areas. Then tap the brush. Now let's check this out. Maybe we can add another leaf over here. Maybe it's a little bit like pointy. We can just add a variety here. We close this. Maybe there's a bit like a grassy leaf. 
I think this looks fine. Then for the other side, let's also add some leafy shapes. I'm leaving a little bit of space right here in the center. Maybe there's another little branch here with these little leaves on each side. If you're having trouble controlling your brush, you can also make it a little bit smaller if you like. Let's go for something like this. And you can either color these areas in by hand or you can use the color drop. Let's add some more here. I think something like this, just some easy shapes. Then drag in the color and it's spilling all over. So I either have a gap. Yeah, I can already see it. Or I had to turn up the color drop threshold. So let's try again. Yeah, then continue filling and tap all the areas. Now let's tap the brush to get out of here and let's check it out. I think it looks perfect. I also want to add a few trees here in the back behind this yellow hill. So let's go to that yellow hill and then one layer below, layer four, then tap the plus and then for the color Let's grab that second color in the second row. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's just make a bit like these little bit of rounded triangular shapes, cone shapes. Just very simple pine trees. Something like this. Now we can't just drag in a color because the shape is opened right underneath. Let's turn off that yellow layer here. Layer five, turn it off. And now when you look, you can see that it's all open. So let's close these shapes over here as well. And then we can drag in the color. You use continue filling, tap the areas. And now we can go back to the layer menu and turn that yellow layer back on. Next, let's create a gradient for our sky. We want our sky to be behind our hills, so our layer needs to be underneath the hill layers. So first let's go to the bottom one, then tap the plus for a new layer. And now we need to drag it underneath the hill. So tap the layer, hold it, and drag it underneath. Then for our color, first we are going to drop in this color over here, the 10th color in the first row. Drag it onto the sky and then let's grab a soft brush. We'll go to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. And for the color, let's grab this one. That's sixth color in the first row. Now the opacity is set to 60% and the size is at 6%. And I'll go over that middle section multiple times to create a band of pink. Just like this. Then we'll move to the next color, this one over here, 10th color in the second row. And we'll use that for the bottom area. Just make multiple strokes, go over that area to cover it with that yellow, yellowish orange color like this. And then to turn it into a gradient, we'll go to the magic wand here then go to Gaussian Blur and slide your pen or your finger to the right on the screen. And let's go for something like this. I'm at 48%. Then tap the brush to get out of here. And I do want to add a little bit more yellow here at the bottom. Let's make our brush bigger to do that. Maybe 20%. Now let's go over this bottom area to add a little bit more yellow. Make it nice and warm. Now we can even make it a little bit lighter. Let's switch to this color, 10th color and the third row. Just to add some light to our horizon. Just like this. Then let's add a sun to our scene. 
Let's make a new layer on top of our sky layer. Let's tap the plus. And then for our color, we'll stick with this color, 10th color, or actually second, well, just this color in the third row. And then for our brush, you can go to the calligraphy brushes and use the monoline brush. It doesn't really matter what size you have. Do make sure that the opacity is at 100%. My size is at 10. And now we are going to draw a circle. Draw a circle, hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape. And then tap one finger on the screen to make it snap to a perfectly round circle. Then drag in the color. And then you can go to the move and transform tool if you want to move it around. Or if you want to make it smaller or bigger, you can set it to uniform here. And use the handle to make it either smaller or bigger. I'll set it to this size over here. Then we'll go to the layer menu. We'll duplicate this layer by sliding to the left, tapping duplicate. And then on this top layer, we are going to use bloom. We'll go to the magic wand here, then go to bloom and then slide to the right until you see this nice glow for your sun. I'm at 60%. We can play around with the burn a little bit. I'll set it to 30%. We can also play with the size how big that glow is. I think 33 looks nice. Then we'll go back to the layer menu, go to that bottom layer, that layer 18, the other sun layer. Then we'll tap the end here and set this layer to screen, which is a nice lighting effect layer blending mode. Then we'll go to the magic wand again. Then we'll go to Gaussian blur and slide to the right to add even more glow to our sun. I'm at 20%. And then we'll go back to the layer menu. We'll tap the background layer here, layer 17, tap the plus for a new layer. And for this one, we'll tap the N again. And this time we'll set it to add, which is also a nice layer blending mode to add lighting effects. And this time for our color, we'll grab this one over here. The blue color, 10th color in the first row, and let's go back to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. Now the opacity of my brush is still at 60% and the size is at 20. And let's add a little bit of a glow, a bluish glow around here. And if you feel like the effect is getting too strong, then you can just go to the layer menu, tap the A here and lower the opacity a bit to let's say 75%. For the next step, we are going to add some texture to our hills. Let's start with the one in the back, layer one. And to make sure that our texture won't show up outside of our mountain or hill or whatever you want to call it, we are going to turn on alpha lock. So tap the layer, then turn on alpha lock. And now we can only paint on the hill that's already there. Then will go to the brushes and then to the spray paints and use the medium nozzle. Now for the color, Let's grab this one over here, 10th color in the third row. Now the opacity is set to 100% and the size is set to 50%. And then we'll go over this area a little bit, just gently, to add a little bit of the yellow to the bottom area. We'll do the same for this one. So we'll go to this layer, tap it, use alpha lock, and then go back and go over that lower area. Then on to this layer. Now another way to turn on alpha lock is actually to use two fingers and slide to the right on your layer. Then go over this lower area. You don't have to have your pen directly on the hill. You can do it a little bit below to get that nice subtle effect. Then we'll go to this layer, tap it, Turn on alpha lock or slide on the layer to the right with two fingers. And then for the color, let's use the second color in the first row for a nice pink color on this hill. Use very little pressure, just gently add some of that color. And then let's move on to the yellow hill. Layer five here, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And then for the color, I would like an orange. Let's use this one. That's the seventh color in the first row. 
And then let's go over that lower area and add some of that orange. Then on to the next layer, layer six, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And then for the color, let's grab this one, fourth color in the first row. And I will go over that lower area, adding some of that purple on both sides. Then on to the next one, layer seven, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And then for the color, we'll grab this one, sixth color in the first row. And here we'll add some of that pink. And on to the next, layer eight, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And for the color here, we'll grab this yellow, fifth color in the first row, and add it over here for that nice texture. And then on to the next hill, layer nine, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And for the color, we'll grab the third color in the first row. Go over the lower area for a little pink. Then move on to layer 10. You can see that alpha lock is already turned on. You can see that checkerboard pattern. And then for the color, we will grab this one over here, eight color in the first row. Go over that lower area for a nice texture and then move on to layer 11. Tap it, turn on alpha lock. And for the color, we'll grab that pink again, sixth color in the first row. And go over here for a little bit of pink, a little bit over here as well. And then for the next one, layer 12, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And for this one, let's grab this color, third color in the first row and add a little bit to the top, just like this. Then we'll move on to layer 13. Alpha lock is already turned on. You can see the checkerboard pattern. And for the color, we'll grab the first color, no, not the first, the fourth color in the first row. And add that to this lower area. Then we'll move on to layer 14, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And let's start with this color that we already have. Let's go over here. And then let's go even darker by grabbing this color, third color in the second row. And let's go over this lower area for a nice bit of shadow. For the next step, I would like to add some light touches to these hills. Let's start with the one in the back, layer one. And for the color, we are going to use this one over here. First color in the third row. And for the brush, we will go to the airbrushing brushes and use the medium brush. And we'll set the opacity to 50%. Was it 50? No, it was 51. 50%. And the size, let's set that to 5%. And we will go along the sides. We'll paint just outside here. So don't touch the hill, but go along. We'll add a little bit of light, just like this, right where the light of the sun would touch. We'll go to the next layer, layer two. We'll do the same thing. We'll go along the outside, so you don't have to touch the hill. Now, if it's getting too thick, then of course you can make your brush a little bit smaller. Just try to stay outside. Then move on to layer three. I'm going to try and make the brush a little bit smaller, maybe 3% and go along the edges. Just like this, adding a nice light effect. And over here, And I'm not going over the right side of the hill here and over here. I didn't do that either because the light is coming from this direction and it won't hit that other side of those hills. Now let's move on to layer four. 
Let's do that for this one as well. And I have made the opacity of this brush a little bit lower so we can make multiple strokes, slowly building up that light edge. It gives you a little bit more control. Of course, if you feel really confident, then you can turn it up to 100% if you like. Then let's do the same thing for layer five, the yellow layer. Add a slight edge there as well. And it gives the whole landscape a bit of like a paper cutout effect almost. Then on to the next one, layer six. Again, on this side, that's where the light would be hitting. And on this hill as well. Here it'll be on the right side of the hill because the light is coming from there. And this also nicely separates these hills from each other. Let's go to layer seven. Add a light touch here as well, right at the top. Then we'll move on to layer eight. Just go along the edge to the top here. Then on to layer nine, and that's the last layer. Then on to layer nine. And let's also add a slight touch to those purple layers. I'm going to leave the grass like this. Let's go to layer 11 and let's grab this color for that. The 10th color or second one in the third row. It's in the 10th spot in any case. Let's go along this edge for a slight little light here as well. And on this one. And then move on to layer 12 and add a slight little light there as well. Now all we need is some trees and some clouds. Let's start with some trees. We'll start where we start behind these purple hills. First tab layer 10 and then tap the plus, and then for the color, we'll grab this fourth color in the second row. And for the brush, let's go back to the calligraphy brushes and use the script brush again. Now let's start by creating a vertical line like this. You can tap your finger on the screen to make it perfectly vertical. And then let's create a diamond shape at the top like this. And then these rounded shapes on each side. It's an abstract stylized tree, this. Nothing too complicated, but it's going to look nice. So shape like this, then you can drag in the color and use continue filling. Let's zoom out, check how it looks. I think it looks nice. We might have to make it a bit smaller or move it around later. We'll see. Now let's go to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer. And here we'll make another tree. Right here, make a line. Hold your pen in place and tap one finger on the screen for a perfectly vertical line. Make another diamond shape here. And then we'll make these kind of shapes. A bit more pointy. We can make these a bit closer together. I 
I can see it's a bit close to the other tree. We can fix that. Let's drag in the color, use continue filling, tap, tap, tap to fill everything, and then tap the brush to get out of here. Now what we could do is go back to that previous tree, layer 21, then go to the move and transform tool, set it to uniform and make this one just a little bit smaller so it doesn't touch the other tree. And then tap the arrow again. I also want to make some trees over here, just behind that grassy hill. And that is, where is it? I believe it's this one. Yeah, so we need to be on this layer, layer nine, tap the plus, stick with the same color and the same brush. And over here again, we'll make a vertical line first, tap your finger on the screen for a perfectly vertical line. And then we'll make another type of tree with these wobbly shapes. Wobbly shape on each side. And over here. And one more. Make them a little bit bigger as you move down. And now let's make another one right here. Make a vertical line. Tap your finger on the screen. We'll start with the top. And then make these wobbly shapes. And make them a little bit bigger as you move down. Then let's drag in the color, use continue filling, and tap all these areas. Next, let's add some texture to these trees. First, let's tap the brush to get out of the color drop menu thingy. And now let's first go to this tree. That's on a layer 21. Let's tap it, use alpha lock so we won't be able to paint outside of it. Then we'll go to the brushes and then we'll go to organic and use the twig brush. And for the color for this brush, we'll start with this color. Sixth, no, fifth color in the second row. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and let's set the size to, let's say 25%. And then let's go over this tree from the outside inward, making these lines. Let's do the same on this area and this one outward to the inside and this one. And then let's switch color. Let's grab this one, fourth color in the first row. And let's go over the other, well, it's like, they look like leaves for our stylized tree. And over here. And on this side. Then we'll switch color. We'll grab the sixth color in the second row. And let's go over these. Add a little of an orangey touch on this tree. Then we'll move to the next tree, layer 22, tap it, turn on alpha lock, and then for the color, we'll first grab this one, fourth color in the first row, and go over the left side of this tree, making these diagonal strokes. And then on the other side, we'll use the fifth color. The fifth color in the second row and we'll move outward from the outside to the inside, adding these diagonal strokes. Then let's do something similar for these trees. Let's go there on layer 23, tap it, turn on alpha lock, and for the color we'll first grab the fourth color in the first row. Let's make these diagonal lines on the left side of the trees. Do the same here. Make sure you don't go over the tree on the left side. Then we'll switch to the fifth color in the second row. And then we'll also add a tiny bit of that 
bluish color. Now I also want to add a little bit of light, that light that's coming from the sun. And I want to use the spray paint brush for that, the medium nozzle. And for the color, we'll grab this one again. First color and the third row. But let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's go for maybe 10%. Let's check it out. I think that's nice. And now let's go along the edge, adding a little bit of light coming from the sun. Right on the edges. Let's do the same for the other trees. Let's go to layer 21. That's the tree on the left. Add a little bit of light here. And on these. And now for the other tree, a layer 22. Again, on the right side, add a little bit of light. And now that we have the light on our trees, we have our trees, all we need are some clouds. Let's make our clouds on a layer on top of our sky layer, but underneath our hills. So let's go to this layer with our sun. Let's tap the plus for a new layer. And then for our color, let's start with this one. Six color in the first row. And for our brush, let's go back to the calligraphy brushes and use the script brush again. Let me zoom out a little bit. Let's start here and make a simple cloud shape like this. Loop back, make a shape like this, drag in the color. Let's do the same over here. Simple cloud shape. Drag in the color. And to make the underside nice and straight, we'll go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon. We'll set it to rectangle. And do make sure that this isn't blue, that color fill isn't turned on. And then let's make a selection like this for the underside. And over here as well. And then you can either swipe with three fingers to clear this area or go to the layer menu, tap the layer and use clear. And now we have a nice straight underside. So now we can make some more clouds. Let's make a new layer on top of this one. So we'll tap the plus. And for our color, we'll grab this one over here, the seventh color in the first row. And let's make another cloud covering the other one. Drag in the color and over here as well. something like this drag in the color make sure you don't have any gaps then go to the selection tool again select the underside for both clouds and like I said you can also slide with three fingers to erase that lower part now let's make another layer tap the plus grab a different color let's grab this one last color in the third row now let's make a little cloud over here Drag in the color and one over here. Drag in the color, grab the selection tool, erase the lower part and swipe with three fingers. Now let's add some texture to our clouds. So let's start with the one in the back. This one, layer 24, tap it, use alpha lock. Then go back to the brushes and grab the medium nozzle under spray paint. And for the color, let's first grab this one, fourth color in the first row. And let's make the brush a little bit bigger again. Maybe 25%. Let's check it out. That's pretty nice, but I think we can go bigger. Let's go back to 45%. And let's go over this area, add a little bit of that dark purple here as well. And now let's switch to, well, this color. Fifth color in the first row, that nice yellow. Now let's go over this underside and over here as well. And then go even lighter by grabbing this one. First color in the third row. P 
paint outside for that lightest touch. Then let's do the same for the next cloud. Layer 25, tap it, use alpha lock. First grab the pink, sixth color in the first row. Let's go over this side, add some color variety to this cloud. Then let's just straight away grab this first color and add that light touch. Now let's move on to layer 26, tap it, turn on alpha lock, then let's grab an orange, that seven color in the first row, add some color variety on these clouds, right on the sides, and then we'll switch back to that first color in the third row for the final light touch on these clouds. And that's it, you've made it to the end. I hope you have enjoyed following this Procreate tutorial. Let me know if you did, and don't forget to share your results, of course. I would like to thank you for watching, and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.